At 7.19 a.m. on September 19, 1985, Mexico City, one of the world's largest urban areas, was jolted by a magnitude 8.1 earthquake, one of the strongest to ever hit the area. The quake was centered off the Pacific coast of Michoacan, 200 miles west of Mexico City. Over 10,000 people died in the earthquake, with 30,000 more injured. More than 400 buildings collapsed and thousands more were damaged. Earthquake threats to public safety are fundamentally linked to, to structural stability. Seismic vibrations generated by earthquakes put stress on building structures, ultimately causing failure and collapse. To combat this stress, shear walls are designed to resist in-plane lateral forces caused by seismic loads. The most common shear walls are made of reinforced concrete, which are designed with steel rods sealed into the concrete to increase strength. However, even with the reinforced concrete, earthquakes still cause massive amounts of damage. Northridge earthquake was a magnitude 6.7 blind thrust earthquake that occurred on January 17, 1994 at 4.30 a.m. Pacific Standard Time in the San Fernando Valley region of the city of Los Angeles. This disaster resulted in 57 deaths and damages estimated at more than $20 billion. More recently, Ecuador was struck by a 7.8 magnitude earthquake on April 16, 2016. The epicenter of the earthquake was 17 miles offshore from the town of Mune, killing almost 700 people and injuring around 6,000 more. This quake leveled 35,000 buildings. People get injured in earthquakes because the building facade, wall, parapet, ceiling, or other part of the structure fails. Thus, new engineering designs to strengthen the building structure are constantly being explored, such as steel plate shear walls. These shear walls are increasing in popularity because they are stronger, lighter, and more ductile. Implementing steel plate shear walls have and will help limit the damage done by earthquakes. But what is actually causing the failure? Buildings must be able to absorb and distribute the energy transmitted by the compression of the earth from P waves, the undulation of S waves, or fast moving surface waves, the most destructive type. If they cannot withstand the stresses caused by these waves, they break, usually in their weakest spot. In a traditional seismic design of building structures, an earthquake energy input is designed to be dissipated by this plastic deformation of some significant structural members, such as frame columns, beams, joints, and braces. The energy dissipation mechanism may cause some structural damages or a total collapse subject to earthquake motions. As seen in the image to the bottom left, the ground floor columns keeping the building upright appear stressed. This causes chunks of concrete to begin to fall off the edges of the columns, weakening the building's critical supports. To combat this issue, engineers have designed SPSW systems, which are significantly thinner, offer similar levels of resistance and stability, and lower total building weight, all without compromising public safety. Due to the law of inertia, the lighter the building, the less force seismic waves will exert on the building. That's why it's important, especially for taller buildings, to be made of light and flexible materials, such as steel, that can bend with the movement of earthquakes. On average, multi-story steel buildings are 60 to 70% lighter and 10 times stronger than concrete frame buildings of the same size. There are three main types of steel plate shear walls, thin, unstiffened, stiffened, and composite concrete. Unstiffened thin SPSWs are very ductile and respond well to lateral force. They can also be constructed very quickly. However, these walls do not have the stiffness required in many tall buildings and thus often need to be reinforced. Stiffened SPSW are reinforced with column bounded steel plate walls with horizontal beams. The steel plate walls operate as a web of vertical plate stiffeners and column flanges. Composite concrete steel plate steel walls are made up of two steel plates with concrete in between them. Specifically designed to resist lateral force, this option provides more stiffness and structural support than the other two. It combines the strength of concrete with the ductility of steel. To be more technical, concrete shear walls are much more brittle, have a low strength to weight ratio, and are highly prone to cracking. 
Although concrete can be slightly improved with reinforcing rods, steel has better mechanical properties overall, which allows for a more consistent response to temperature change and easier failure mitigation. As seen in the table, SPSW's ultimate strength is between 400 to 500 megapascals, compared to the concrete's ultimate strength of 37 to 40 megapascals. This allows the steel plate shear walls to experience more load before failure, and in turn resist a stronger earthquake. Additionally, as seen in column 3, SPSW has a much higher fracture toughness of 50 compared to concrete's 0.6 which means SPSWs are more ductile and less prone to cracking than concrete steer walls. The graph below shows the change in impact energy as temperature changes. Impact energy is the energy required to fracture a specimen. The higher the impact energy means the material can absorb more force before fracturing. Thus, a higher and more consistent impact energy is favorable for building structures. Concrete, a polymer, follows the pink curve and steel follows the green curve. Shear walls made of materials that have high consistent impact energy across different temperatures are more favorable than materials that have drastic changes. Thus, steel is more favorable than concrete. Additionally, the processing for steel is much more advantageous than concrete, which in turn increases the possibility of failure mitigation. Concrete has a very slow and limited processing method. It dries and cures through a chemical interaction between water and the cement. Steel, however, does not need to be cured, allowing a much faster, more fluid construction process. Furthermore, steel can undergo additional processing to modify and improve the mechanical properties, whereas concrete cannot. This includes heat treatment to increase surface hardness or ductility. Looking at SPSW materials in more depth shows that they use a low yield point steel. The LYP steel is also frequently adopted in hysteretic metallic energy absorbers. The advantages of LYP steel energy absorbers as a novel kind of passive energy dissipation devices include simple conformation, stable hysteretic performance, low cost and explicit early warning mechanisms under earthquake action. To study the non-linear behavior of FE models, the stress strain diagram to the right defines the constitutive behavior of steel materials. The low yield point steel, a low carbon steel, has a low yield stress and high elongation capacity compared to conventional steel. The yield strength of LYP steel is much lower than that of ordinary steel, which enables metallic energy absorbers made of this LYP steel to form the plastic deformation for energy dissipation when subjected to earthquake load or intensive wind loads. The yield strength is less than 0.5 times the ultimate strength and the much prolonged strain hardening process accompanied by the accumulation of plastic deformation will contribute to the seismic resisting capacity and guarantee the required lateral stiffness under earthquakes. With a Young's modulus of 210 gigapascals, the elongation and break is approximately 48%, and the favorable plastic capacity without deterioration will ensure the superior structural ductility. Attributable to its high plastic deformation capacity, the shear walls are able to maintain stable up to 3 to 6 percent of story drift angle. So the LYP steels has been widely applied in seismic engineering. These properties can be attributed to the microstructure of the A36 steel used in SPSWs. As shown to the right, the microstructure consists of ferrite and perlite. The ferrite increases ductility and elongation, while perlite increases the tensile strength. Steel used in shear walling is highly suitable for prefabrication and has potential for material reuse. High strength to weight ratio coupled with low carbon footprint 1.16 tons of CO2 per ton of fabricated hot road steel makes it an ideal choice for construction of high-rise buildings and structures in highly seismic areas. This also results in an overall reduction of the embodied carbon of a typical structure as compared to buildings constructed with other framing materials. 
while other products can only be recycled into a lower quality product, downcycled. Steel can be recycled and made into new members without any loss of quality. This makes it the first and only true cradle to cradle building framing material. As the green building movement grows, more building owners, architects, engineers, and contractors are selecting these steel framing systems to meet sustainable design and construction goals. To conclude, SPSW is being implemented in modern construction for numerous advantages. This application of engineering materials can help prevent the damage caused by earthquakes and increase public safety. The United States Federal Courthouse in Washington, Hyatt Regency Hotel in Texas, and Shinjuku Numura Building in Japan are just a few examples of steel plate shear walls being used currently.